गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी हाँ वॉट वी विल डू इज नाउ वील ट्राई टू कंप्लीट दिस यूनिट टू एंड देन प्रॉब्ली आफ्टर दि एग्जाम्स एंड ऑल वील स्टार्ट ऑफ विद दि ला प्रॉपर वी हैव ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ दैट ओल्ड आई पी सी सी आर पी सी दैन एविडेंस एक्ट एंड लेटर ऑन फिजिकल एविडेंस एंड सर दैट कंप्लीट्स अवर सिलेबस फॉर थर्ड एंड फोर्थ यूनिट्स इफ आई कंप्लीट i'll be completing that paper now today <clears throat> we'll try to complete uh, organized crime then we touch upon the economic offences then we also uh, will cover the other uh, economic crimes isn't it now all related these are all related and a little overlapping also i can say and of course environmental crimes are also equally important so let us just try to understand of course white collar crimes are also there on the other side so we'll try to cover maximum possible but others otherwise are very simple to understand so let me just start off with uh, organized crime now while all other crimes have a different name but uh, why this particular crime is called organized crime so there is there is a reason for that now why is it called so group of people when we say organized there must be more than one person so it means group of people and then whenever we say there is a plan strategy isn't it there is a um, particular um, plan of action and all so we say that it is an organized thing so work to profit from illegal activities now why is it called a crime because it is an illegal activity not approved by the law and then they are getting some profit out of that illegal activity so that is called when you get money out of illegal activity we give a separate name for that wrongful gain isn't it so they are gaining wrongfully and then it's not a single person's activity they, there is a group they are all organized they have a strategy and not only that like in any other government organization or any private organization there is a hierarchy there is a boss under him there is a um, you know middle management person then after that you have a lower middle management and then at the clerical level that way there is a hierarchy isn't it so the person who is underneath him will uh, report to him and the other person uh, the, uh, the top boss will be somewhere sitting so there is a hierarchy now there are rules and conduct like government rules and all disciplinary action and all there are so many things in any government organization or for that matter private organization also lot of sops sops regarding conduct rules you know so like that they also have some conduct rules and uh, if suppose somebody is not abiding to the to those rules conduct rules and then there are consequences also for that or somebody is not able to meet the target set for them so there also there is a punishment for that there is a consequence that a person has to uh, bear so because of these features because of these characteristics we say that unlike other crimes this is little organized crime now in government also there is a procedure if you want to recruit somebody there is a procedure again then there is a qualification that we see there is a talent test we we'll see then in interview we we conduct and then we try to take some demonstrations and all like that you know here also this organized crime has got its own recruitment boards they give lot of trainings to people who are recruited and after that before execution also they try to give trial trials for them how to execute how to plan and all there is lot of uh, strategy that goes to Mm, before even the event uh, gets executed there is a lot of planning that goes into so because of these features now this crime has got a special name called the organized crime then so there are definitions again there is one um, uh, act called organized crime uh, ap control of organized crime act 2001 in andhra pradesh they have enacted this now in that they have given a very exhaustive inclusive kind of a definition for organized crime and even now in the current uh, act also both organized crimes and terror acts have been given a special definition um, under the act under the new acts also now in this particular uh, act what they said is 
continuing unlawful act you see this wording so that means not for once or twice or maybe uh, three times it is a continuous ongoing process so what are they doing in that ongoing process unlawful activity by an individual that means singly or jointly either as a member of an organized crime syndicate because there are group of people we call them syndicates isn't it in this syndicate there is one member who belong to that organization and organized syndicate so he will do or maybe there is one person who will plan and other person getting executed the other person still watch make uh, keep a watch uh, whether somebody is coming or the or not or is it safe place now can we execute so such type of signals and all will be indications will be there for them so it may be done by single handed or maybe it is a joint venture so he is definitely a member of the tarnay syndicate or maybe he is executing this on the behalf of the syndicate and what is the method what is the instrument that he uses he uses again violence or at least if not violence he will give a threat of violence and then let, there is a lot of intimidation there le, lot of pressure is there coercion is there and other than this any other lawful means may be there so ultimately what is the purpose and what is the objective they are going to gain out of this this is pecuniary benefits so illegal money fast mm-hmm. money isn't it mm-hmm. um, money which somebody will uh, gain without any hard work that is illegal gain unlawful gain or uh, wrongful gain so whatever name we can give so this is so the ultimate objective of this type of crimes is only pecuniary benefit or gaining a new economic or other advantage for himself or any other person or promoting insurgency so if there is already some insurgency some unrest going on in that society or in that particular area then this will add this will add or they may promote because they are also interested in promoting the insurgency or promote or they don't want a particular government to be there so they want to um, create take advantage of that situation and then create some uh, ill feeling among them so they may promote because insurgency and all require lot of ammunition arms and all some tools so they don't mind providing resources for that or they may fund that uh, particular insurgency now organized syndicates are a group of two or more persons who acting either singly or collectively as a syndicate or gang indulge in activities of organized crime so those syndicates are those group of people who activity is mainly is illegal means of acquiring money and then towards that they don't mind using some intimidation or they may go to the extent of using some violence or at least if not violence if threat of violence is sufficient they will only use that but whatever be the mode but ultimately their aim or objective or purpose is to gain illegal money money through illegal means so the uh, what are the targets do they target only properties because their ultimate aim is only uh, to gain money or are they going to uh, attack even persons or human welfare engineered by leader with members professing fierce um, loyalty now organized crime in a large measure affects law and order and public order that is the reason why we say you no know, whenever public order or public at large will get affected normally it uh, attracts the attention of the law um, and the law enforcement officers and also the judiciary and all so the term mafia crime or mafia gangs are all used in common parlance to mean organized crime and crime so it is quite common that we use this mafia sand mafia uh, uh, fodder mafia there are so many mafias you know this is the colloquial word rather a layman's term that we try to use for any organized crime now always in in such type of uh, crimes there is a kingpin sitting at the helm of affairs and then he will never be seen in the picture he will never be seen in the picture and uh, through his members because it's a syndicate so idea strategy planning and all will be done by that uh, uh, the the top most man who is called otherwise the kingpin and he is the mastermind behind all these strategies and then he plans and then he selects people who are experts because 
in the group also in the syndicate also not everyone is equipped with the same kind of a talent isn't it some people may be very good shooters some people are experts in planning some people are experts in executing and some people are you know they are, they are experts in uh, breaking the lock of any difficult uh, almira and also people are differently um, given uh, training and they are, their talents are also different so it is for the kingpin to understand the capabilities of each syndicate member and accordingly whenever some um, crime has to be executed the he is going to use uh, the talents of the syndicate members so that is the reason why we call them as gangsters or the criminal gangs or mafia mafia is the colloquial word common word that we try to use now there are crimes like causing injuries or killing for gain now not only the intimidation or threaten to intimidate or threaten to use force and all but to the extent they may injure people they may kill also for gain groups of gundas are also hired who go to the extent of causing injury or kill some somebody due to political business or group rivalry or some other reason see here they may not be experts the kingpin is not expert in all aspects isn't it kingpin kingpin is not an expert in all thing he is good at execution he is good at planning he has got lot of ideas he is a brainy man isn't it now what he does is some people experts are there you know <clears throat> without not much force or without less bloodshed they are experts you know they they use the surgical precision in uh, killing people are cutting bodies and all and some people are experts in such so they hire they are gundas professionals uh, people who come um, uh, who can be hired and then they 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 will take the clue from the kingpin and then they they ask for some money and if that money uh, is arranged then all that they want is only that photo of that person to be given once that is given so they'll go and then very coolly execute this kind of a Mm. and depending upon what weapon has to be used whether it is a, a bomb or a, or a firearm or something else they'll choose and then they'll silently kill that and then after the job gets over they get whatever ransom that they were um, demanding that will be paid by the kingpin and there ends the matter so this is how it happens with the hired uh, uh, professional gundas then uh the perpetrator as i said you know uh, uh, he will receive the remuneration or whatever uh, prize money or whatever money he demanded for that particular execution of work he'll get it but then the kingpin always who is the man behind that and he remains aloof so he will never be in the picture so he never he'll never be in the picture so unless until you break the nexus between these uh, syndicate groups and then reach Uh, the kingpin almost it is very very difficult in most of the uh, organized crimes to catch the kingpin who is the mastermind behind all these things it will be very difficult because he will never be in the picture and then his name will never figure out in the uh, prosecution or he will never be named in the charge sheet even so then it will be difficult for the uh, prosecuting agency and the enforcing agency to identify him so once there his name doesn't appear in the chart sheet or anywhere even in the fir it will be difficult you know he will remain i uh, you know um, anonymous he will be aloof and then he will away he is no more in the picture then what are the types of crimes which constitute organized crime if you try to look into it bootlegging is one thing and then prostitution at a higher level gambling manipulation bids and tenders so whenever a bid is there so insider will be there and then they'll in many movies also we keep seeing this you know how bids can be manipulated and can be molded to their own uh, benefit and all tenders auctions contracts all these will be and land grabbing these days you know without uh, any exception uh, all cities metropolitan as well as others uh, smaller cities are also they are victim of this land grabbing so people advise mostly in places like hyderabad and all if you have to buy a, a land and if you want to invest in land so every now and then go and then see at least have some kind of a vigilance on that otherwise the grabbers are they are they are been uh, almost henchmen for uh, some uh, 
um, people and then they don't mind if it comes to uh, taking the land and all, they don't mind mercilessly, they may kill also, even if you go with a police protection and all. So the arms that the police carry are no match uh, with the arms that these people uh, possess. So ultimately it is the land grabber who wins always. So any empty land, they and they'll keep an vigilance. So whether people are coming regularly, whether they are keeping a watch on their own property, if, uh, if they have a feeling on their own ricky, if they find that uh, this land has not been inspected, nobody, no owner is coming and then claiming and they are not keeping any um, watch on that. So that type of uh, properties become, um, I mean, the hard cakes for these people. So they'll have an eye on that and then slowly they observe. And if nobody comes regularly, then they don't mind creating some fake uh, documents on that and then they slowly grab the land. This is how it happens. And illegal position or disposition of property, of course, protection of money, rigging elections, low election loans and all, extortion, kidnapping, and then for ransom, drug trafficking, of course, I need not tell you about drug trafficking, how it is a menace. I mean, no countries are without this kind of a menace. Now, drug trafficking, peddlers are there and then the, the kingpins are there and then there is a very great enactment, NDPS, narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance, though we have enacted and though there is a preventive detention also provided in that and then forfeiture is also another kind of a thing because the, the judiciary strongly feels that there is no point only in punishing the criminal. So both muscle power and money power both have to be curbed. Only then the mm, criminal becomes, uh, um, and others uh, it, it will become a great deterrent and then others will not venture to do it. And then of course there are uh, agencies who are given quasi-judicial kind of a, a power also in that and there are lot many agencies including your border security forces, then um, directorate of revenue intelligence. There are so many other in, in, uh, agencies involved. So collectively they do it because it's uh, it's also across the borders, you know, across the border countries. So definitely the border security force is one such uh, force and paramilitary forces are also there. So a lot of agencies get involved so that people when they cross borders and then when they try to flee away to the other country and all or other state or other nation maybe. So the um, there should be uh, some agency which should keep vigilance on that. Customs state customs and then excise and a lot of uh, agencies are involved in that. Then the area of operation of these groups may extend to districts or states or even countries. So inter-country uh, or um, uh, interstate or inter-district gangs are very very active in these areas. So they are groups bound to an individual or to each other. So there is a lot of cohen, um, cohesiveness among the groups, among the syndicates. Generally, there is always a leader, as I said, or a head, or a kingpin, or mastermind of such group, and then all ideas will be, and then he get to know, he'll get to know, he'll get to know the information from all corners. There are informers also for them, so he'll get to know, and then he'll uh, know he'll have the list of all the rich people of that locality, and then who are all the people whom I can target, and what are the um, timings for them, when will they not be so alert, and all these kind of information he. Uh, gets to know and then accordingly once the information is there he'll plan and then he'll make a strategy out of that and among the syndicate members he'll select the right person there and then he explains the strategy he'll chuck out a plan for that and then group of these uh, syndicate members they go collectively and then somebody keep a vigilance there somebody keeps a watch over there so like that they will um, plan I mean they will assign job to each person and ultimately they execute the plan. Now generally there is always a leader as I said you know there is also a kingpin who is the mastermind behind the group. And then how do they operate? What is the strategy? Now some groups are so well organized that they are able to perpetrate the crime without being caught. So because they have been practicing then since so long and there is a plan, there is a strategy, there is a methodology, isn't it? So everything is so organized in this particular crime. So most of the crimes you see the perpetrators going scot-free and there is no punishment. Now what will that uh, 
kind of a message goes. So, but definitely if they are doing this kind of a planning and then this kind of a um, strategy, their, their abilities should be sharp. They should have sharp abilities and they should have a code of conduct and failing which somebody is going to will be punished. And then they should equip themselves with whatever that is required, whether it be arms, ammunition, or whether it be some weaponry and all, it should be available to them. And then day-to-day -day intelligence. I said the kingpin is the one who gets the information by way of intelligence and all. So they, they should be um, intelligence uh, gathering also. Now, then sometimes they resort to elimination or threatening to the persons who come in their way. Now, normally in any crime investigation, we have informers, we have witnesses, we have police officers doing the investigation, lawyers, I mean, both uh, defense as well as the prosecution arguing their cases, judges uh, and also politicians. And these people, they will be threatened. Isn't it? Because they are coming in the way witnesses come and then they see, they, they depose whatever they see, whatever they heard, whatever they have that comes to their knowledge, they will come and then depose this same in the court. So they will be intimidated, they will be threatened and they, they, they will also resort to some procedures where it is better that we eliminate this uh, witness completely. Otherwise he is going to someday or the other, he will be summoned, he will go to this court and he will tell about our crime, so it's better we eliminate him. So these are all the more vulnerable people unless until they take their own precaution for their self-defense. Otherwise, they also become victims of the gang. Then with politicians, always they have this leverage. You know, what they do is if they, somebody is not coming their way and somebody are in fact coming in their way, so there are means they bribe this, them or they may collide with them and then ensure that they are not coming in their way, isn't it? They infiltrate into political parties, use muzzle power to manipulate elections and even occupy positions of political power. Small criminal organizations operating in a limited sphere quietly to uh, sophisticated outfit with all attributes of a mafia. So initially it may start with a very small group and all now with muscle power what they do, they try to elections because political parties they want um, uh, this rigging of elections and all, they want uh, um, manipulation in the election. So there, there is a collusion between these group and uh, the, the political group. So you pay us uh, this much and then we do the rigging part for you. So this is an understanding now. And then that's slowly they graduate themselves to mafia gangs. Initially, they may be very small groups doing this kind of jobs, but then ultimately they grow to a level of a mafia gang. So, how is this possible? How, we, how, are, how can they grow that much? This is because they have very good network, whether it be communication or whether it be transfer, because quick means they have to um, run away from the scene, run, run away from the event. So that is possible only when you have good communication and good transport, isn't it? From place to place, from area to area, they, within no time they need to go away, they need to leave that place. So this is possible because they have a very good network. One person waiting in the car, one person waiting maybe in a very sophisticated car at the end of the um, road and then uh, there is a signal which is given by the middle person who is they assigned that particular job. And then in a quick uh, span of time, so there is a lot of gestures from one party to the other and then once the job is done, they will uh, um, bring that vehicle to that particular spot and uh, in a quick of a moment, they will all uh, board the vehicle and then they move off. So networking is very, very good um, and that is the reason why they can um, easily execute that particular uh, crime and then run away from the place uh, I mean, without uh, the notice by anybody. See, the, what is the purpose ultimately is, as I told you, illegal money. Make money as quickly as possible, whatever way, the, whatever way, whatever method they may use that is irrespective of that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, how quickly can I make money? Uh, even if it means an illegal act, illegal money, that is money gotten illegally. These organized groups have a complex network with well-defined structure, command control. So there is the command from one end and then it will be followed and the control is vested with the kingpin and all. So whatever he wants with a 
within seconds he can get it done because he has got such a force behind him and they don't mind using violence if it is required in the perpetration of the crime so they have all the wherewithal infrastructure recruitment is there training is there so execution also they are given lot of uh, training programs and all there is no problem they are, they are now professionals isn't it so professional with the different skill sets so whenever a particular skill set is required kingpin knows who is expert in which field activity skill so he employs those people and then silently very smartly they'll go there execute that work and then without being noticed by anybody very quickly they can with the quickest means of communication transport they are able to uh, come back and even police were not able to trace them quickly because the kind of uh, um, transport and then the communication the police are having are no match with the ones which uh, the organized uh, group are having so they are no match no uh, when we talk about laws are there any laws which govern this particular thing which define and then which say that this particular activities under the organized crimes are can be termed as illegal offenses or crimes and then what kind of sections deal and are there any special local acts which are enacted to combat this case of these cases of organized crime and all if you try to examine then lot of special local laws are there now some such local laws of course we have that in um, crpc and all old crpc 102 151 452 and all are there but then when it comes to customs act it's a separate act and then some sections under that and then of course and under ndps also there are sections like 68 and then of course ap control organized crime 2001 act also there are and amendments later on you do have lot of uh, provisions for this and then foreign exchange management act fema earlier 1999 and then the smugglers foreign exchange manipulation where the forfeiture of property because uh, as i already said it is not suffice that you levy some punishment and some uh, money fine and all that is not sufficient because he has earned so much that paying a fine a petty amount out of that towards fine will not make him returned so unless until you also take away the ill gotten money or ill gotten properties because money will uh, they will they will never keep money in fluid state so whatever ill gotten money that is there they will convert it and then convert them into immobile properties you know so unless until you have a provision in ndps that even the ill gotten property is money and more in more uh, one more important point is you know they will ensure that these properties are not there in their names so in that particular act if you see ndps so relative means who is the relative is a spouse relative or spouse uh, parents are related um are their uh, father in law mother in law who is a relative except the servant uh the definition of relative is so vast there so even if you keep uh, um, the property in somebody's name and all then it is difficult you cannot because there is a um, there is an analysis uh, financial analysis will be done what are the sources is the uh, income Mm, um, I, mean, i mean when you see the income and then the properties acquired are they matching or are they in disproportionate quantity and all they'll try to do a complete financial uh, investigation and then when they see when they find that um, there is a house now very intelligently what they do there is a ancestral property you now that is uh, uh, gotten legally Uh, then on that they are going to build another floor or two three floors now whatever illegal ill gotten money that is there they will invest on that and then they try to and then say this is our own ancestral property we only try to improve it or develop it whatever so then again they will say say if you, if you, part of the house is uh, uh, got legally then what is the market value of that and uh, they don't mind giving that deduct that and give it to them so that kind of provisions are also there when we talk of financial investigation of the entire uh, ill gotten money for feature of properties and all in that particular chapter we will see elaborate uh, kind of an enactment it is no type of a uh, crime categories that is uh, what you can name as organized crime is you know drug trafficking employment racketeering bootlegging then gundas and indulging in land grabbing contract killing kidnapping extortion 
uh, election rigging, money laundering. So these are, I mean, list is ever ending like that. So there are so many kinds of uh, categories of crimes that we can name them as organized because in all these crimes, one uh, uh, factor is very, very predominant. That is, you know, this is done by a group of people who, who form a, an syndicate and syndicate have got a code of conduct and then they are organized, there is a hierarchy, there are a set of rules and somebody not abiding by the rules will strictly be punished and then they need to face the consequences of those acts, I mean omissions and all. So there is a kind of a um, planning and all in that. So that is the reason all the given category of crimes can also be collectively called as organized crimes. Now, every district and city now state, if you see there is invariably a CID department, uh, then there has to be a separate unit for this, for organized crimes, for economic crimes and all. We have different wings in CID, you know, a particular unit exclusively de dealing with this kind of a, uh, an offense or uh, uh, crime. So, especially organized crime and all, uh, we also have a, a dedicated team of investigating officers and then that particular dedicated team uh, exclusively deal with the organized kind of a crime only. Like that, for different uh, crimes, uh, we have uh, some special crimes, not all uh, regular routine crimes, but in special crimes like this, uh, whether it be scam, whether it be white collar crime or uh, Ponzi schemes and all, there are so many uh, organized crimes and all for that. The CID ensure that there is a special dedicated team for that so that they need not look into other um, normal ordinary kind of crimes. Not that they are serious, but then they are vested with this power of exclusively dealing with this type of, you know, because they are specialized in that particular unit and they are given lot of training in that. So they will be used only for that purpose. Now the criminal records from all PS level to state should contain the information in respect of such criminal syndicates. So, these criminal records that are maintained in the police station, they need an update. So, every every now and then the criminal syndicate, they keep growing. You know, the details of that syndicate scenario will be available in the PS level. And it is for the investigating officer to ensure what is their modus operandi, who are all the leaders, who are all the connected people there. So, all such details now in the form of criminal records which are available at the PS level, to state level, up to state level, the police officer who is investigating this type of, especially the CID people, should have a detailed account of these things. Now, the police have the responsibility of identifying, exposing, taking all such preventive actions in respect of all manifestations of organized criminal activity. So, especially during election times or during some bandobas duties and all, or when there is a uh, what emergency declaration and all, they will ensure that these people are rounded off and then as a precautionary measure or a preventive measure, preventive detention of such people, um, they will be rowdy sheeters and all, I mean history sheeters and all, they will be rounded up and then maybe they, they are also part and parcel of this organized crime. So they try to keep them as a, as a preventive measure, preventive detention happens and they will be um, put uh, uh, in the custody. The persons have associated themselves to form a criminal gang. Uh, you need to collect the proof of that such, a, such association. And uh, evidence is, at the end of the day, it is very important, whether it be organized crime or ordinary crime or some cyber crime, whatever name you try to give it to the crime. Ultimately, after investigation, police are the people who are going to collect a lot of uh, clues and uh, they have to prove those clues and then they have to introduce them as evidence and then get the admission for that and then ultimately mm, approved by the court and all. So, as a proof of object, what are, what are they supposed to do? The object of association was habitual, that is they are regularly, continuously doing that and uh, they commit a lot of murders, a lot of kidnaps and then they are involved in contract killing. This kind of objective proof in form of you know, material objects or <clears throat> in form of other evidences, ocular or other documentary evidence, the police officer needs to collect. And then prohibited liquor and all, you need to send that to the laboratory to find out what is the content of that liquor, whether it is prohibited or otherwise Indian made foreign liquor, what type of uh, uh, liquor it is. And in case of land grabbing and all, mostly it is the document examination. So, the, to the concerned expert, you need to send it so that you will get the 
అనాలిసిస్ రిపోర్ట్ అండ్ దట్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ది డాక్యుమెంట్స్ ఫౌన్ టు బి ఫ్యా ఫ్యాబ్రికేటెడ్ ఆర్ ఫ్రాడ్ లెండ్ దెన్ దట్ బికమ్స్ అ వెరీ స్ట్రాంగ్ ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ ప్రూఫ్ ఫర్ ది ప్రాసిక్యూషన్ టు ప్రూవ్ నవ్ ఫైర్ ఆర్మ్స్ ఎక్స్ప్లోజివ్ స్మగ్లింగ్ అండ్ అండ్ ఫైర్ ఆర్మ్స్ ఆల్సో విత దే ఆర్ ఇండియన్ మేడ్ ఫారెన్ మేడ్ ఆర్ కంపెనీ మేడ్ కంట్రీ మేడ్ దీస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ బికమ్స్ వెరీ వెరీ రిలవెంట్ నవ్ దట్ మే హ్యావ్ సమ్ బేరింగ్ ఆన్ ద కేస్ సో ఇఫ్ సచ్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ ఎవిడెన్సెస్ ఆర్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ప్యారమౌంట్ దట్ దీస్ ఇన్వెస్టిగేటింగ్ ఆఫీసర్స్ దే నీడ్ టు సెండ్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ మెటీరియల్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ టు ది ల్యాబ్ అండ్ ఆ సర్టైన్ ది ఎగ్జాక్ట్ information on that and then submit their report in the court of law which of course is recorded as a piece of evidence in the court of law now previous conviction if any it is there it is also very important why previous conviction because for the same offense if they are continuously doing and then if the crimes if the guilt is proved and all now there is a record of that in the court now if they can uh, go there and then through the calendar if they can collect the information and then also include that in the investigation now because such details will be there in the calendar and then in which court he has been tried and what is the offense for how long he was there um, put in imprisonment and all who is the magistrate who tried this case all such details of previous conviction if you can show in the um, charge sheet and all that will have a different bearing because for the same offense second time or or the uh, the consecutive time if he does it there is an enhancement uh, enhanced punishment for the same offense so for, to prove that also they need to produce lot of evidence the recovery of property or other incriminating materials it can be documents it can be single case and several members of the gang so these stolen properties documents are the evidences that uh, are the property that is recovered from them or in any incriminating uh, material like you know weapon or the firearm whatever they are using so that kind of an evidence need to be collected properly that need to be processed properly and of course after the um, examination that gets over in the uh, fsl you need to submit the reports also then victims as a part of you know victim examination earlier we used to call the 161 statements 164 statements like that you know this becomes very very paramount though they may not have any other relevance except for uh, you know to 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 use them as you know to uh, recollect their memory and all maybe that is the purpose or maybe for defense they are useful and all to contradict and all but then nevertheless these statements from victims friends relatives they are very very important and then they need to be very minutely um, they need to be recorded and then their what is the background what is their uh, identity and all that has to be um, you know examine and collect all clues even minor so initially they may appear very insignificant and all but then it is uh, by way of abundant precaution even if they may seem in initially very minor very insignificant but uh, it is worthwhile to collect such piece of information also maybe tomorrow at a later point of time in the investigation they may be of some use so all such minute things also need to be collected then papers documents letters bank check books drafts and then other materials some notices and all i mean these need to be um, collected properly the question question the suspect minutely and record his statement in detail so this is very very this is an art by itself now interrogation of suspects is a very uh, tactful thing all investigating officers are not masters in that so only some people they are good at uh, this kind of an interrogation so in the process of uh, questioning the suspect they need to get lot many details which otherwise um, if they don't do this proper invest interrogation they not be able to get so those uh, clues then if the evidence is to be collected after exhaustive investigation is inadequate effort should be made to make one of the minor participants in the offense as a approver or prosecute main offender success this is very very important because it's not done by one person as we have already seen in the definition it is a gang of people a group of people who do um, these things now it is paramount that out of uh, so many i mean not everybody will participate equally in the 
uh, in the commission of the crime. One may keep a vigilant, one may be tying hands, or one may be doing other things. So whoever is part, whoever participated, or whoever has got a minor role in the participation, you can take that fellow into confidence and make him an approver, and then uh, you you can also negotiate with him the, because since your role is very limited, you uh, uh, turn. Uh, Mm, uh, into approval and then we'll ensure that we'll ensure that um, you will be given lesser punishment or your name will be eliminated this kind of promises they'll get and then one of them can be made an approver and uh, the main offenders or uh, offenders who have played a major role can successfully be prosecuted later now identify the country in which the proceeds of crime are taken away are hidden are kept see normally in the in one country they try to do this kind of a, um, an offence and then the, the, I mean Swiss money Swiss bank and all we are we are all aware so this money the the proceeds of the money it may be in the form of a money currency or whatever you know they try to transfer it we are hide it away from the uh, clutches of these local police and then they will transfer it to some other country so that there is no trace of it. Efforts should be made to seize and forfeit the same. So, as an investigating officer, though it is difficult, but then yet it is your duty. What you can do is then go to such countries when you have information and then also with the help of local police there, then you do this forfeiture, you can seize and then forfeit that particular property. Now, make foolproof arrangements to maintain secrecy and protection of uh, to information witness. See, witness protection is one of the things. Why no witness comes, though they are eyewitness and all, they do not come forward to um, act as witnesses. The very reason is that we don't have any procedure laid down in any act to protect the victims or they protect the witnesses and all. So, you have to take enough precautions, you know, to protect the witness also because we do not know they may be intimidated, they may be coerced, they may be killed, they may be injured, they may be put to some harm and all, we do not know. So for that reason, informers and then witnesses also need to be um, given a lot of protection and whatever information that they are sharing, that needs to be maintained under secrecy. Now the evidence should be gathered as to conspiracy because these elements are very, very, because organized crimes even attempt, isn't it? even participation, conspiracy, intention, these are also, uh, I mean, can be construed as crimes. And the uh, crime need not be accomplished even. So even at the attempt stage or abatement stage also, they, they are punishable. So that is the reason when you gather information or gather evidence, you need to focus on matters of conspiracy and matters of abatement and then of course common intention because when we talk of uh, group we, we talk of common object and common intention and all. Now make use of all information available in criminal records as I told you criminal records are being maintained both at the police station level at the state level also. So the person who is investigating such crimes it is it becomes uh, his duty to ensure that what are all the criminal uh, records uh, about that man and then what are the new syndicate that have been added to the list and all who are active who are operative in that particular area. So all such details he will get from the criminal records which are either maintained at the police station or at the state level. See, as I said, 110 of old CRPC against the members of the gang insist on a bond under 106 CRPC in the event of conviction whenever possible. So, this bond and all, I mean, for um, periodically coming and then signing and all, I mean, there is a lot of provisions in there. And then consult to take assistance of concerned experts for appraisal of any aspect that relates to, because it involves money. Tax evasion is also one of the organized crimes and then banking system. So you take any kind of an institution, these organized crimes can happen. So a person who is investigating this kind of a, um, uh, this type of organized crimes, you cannot expect him to be a master in all uh, aspects. So like uh, Sachem case and all, what uh, hitherto there were no experts, no expert was there available to deal with such a type of a very huge uh, scam. So they hired one person, they declared him as an expert and then they have used his services and then uh, such a big uh, uh, data he has to analyze and then give a very elaborate uh, kind of a report on that and for the first time he has been declared as an expert over there. 
So otherwise there was no expert by definition to deal exclusively with uh, such uh, type of uh, expertise. Then if it is required because there is no other evidence that is available coming out, then polygraph is the or lie detector is the only method of a scientific interrogation. Now as uh, you may say that it is not all that uh, admissible in the court of law and all but then as a tool of investigation you can still use it and then if you can get some uh, you know after revelation if you get some information out of that and probably some transaction which can which you can correlate with the bank transactions and all if that particular um, extract if you can get from bank that is a good piece of evidence again because it's an objective kind of an evidence now Interception of wire and electronics also you need to um, get permissions and then you can obtain that under section 14 of AP control of organized crime 2001. They are all permitted. Interception is you know, legal. You can, you can do the, for the purpose of investigation. You are permitted to do that. Then procedure has to be because most of the crimes, uh, the, the prosecution becomes a failure. Not that they do not know the procedure, but then at one part or the other, because it's a team of agency who does this entire activity. It's not single agency's activity. So when more agencies are involved, more mistakes can be done. And then it is easy for the one agency to pass on the buck and then say, as long as it was in my custody, nothing has happened. Only when I transferred it to some other agency, they are responsible. So lapses, whatever are there, they are on their part. It's not on my part. So it it is easy for the agencies also to escape, isn't it? Now, for that reason, it is paramount that, you know, there should be kind of a um, collaboration and then co coordinated effort from all the agencies, if multi-agencies is involved in the investigation. And uh, of course, we know that confession made to a police officer is not relevant under the Evidence Act, but then now under this particular act, AP Control Organization Act 2001, a confession made to police officer of and above the rank of SP by accused is admissible under the section 18. So this is an exception to our 27 or whatever that is there in the evidence act, you know, any confession made to the police officer, it is bar. So now that bar is not there in this particular act. Now, with this we have completed the uh, organized uh, crime part and then let us move on to economic, uh, but not much very difference between these, but then still uh, that topic is given under uh, our syllabus. So, let us also touch upon what economic offense mean. Now, economic uh, offenses, uh, otherwise called financial crimes, otherwise we can also call white collar crimes. By the time, uh, by the way, anyway, uh, people are also aware of different collar crimes, white collar crime and any white collar crime we all know. Is there any pink collar crime, green collar crime, red collar crime? Are there different colors to that? Blue, blue collar crime or black collar crime? Like uh, rainbow, do we have this type of uh, crimes? Is somebody aware of that? No, I am not aware of it. Huh, they are all different colors. Mm. I know, I know. So, there are different colors, collar colors. One is white collar crime. So, um, white collar crimes, you know, yes. people, uh, yes, somebody knows it? Crime against? Can you be a little louder so that uh, everybody will know about it? Yes. Who is this? Hmm. Pink, pink collar crimes you are talking about? Yes, not pink collar. Ah. So why are they called pink collar? Are they violent or non-violent crimes in the first place? Ma'am, in my knowledge it's violent. It is? Violent, ma'am, I guess. Uh, people use it. No, no. This is pink collar. Why? Because this has been the, the, the accused people are women here. Middle management women. So, hence it is called pink collar. So, this is non-violent type of crime. And then, of course, pertaining to finances. 
so the 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 modus operandi is you know bookkeeping and all there will be lot of transactions in that you know id theft embezzlement so this type of crimes will be specially mid management middle management and lower middle management level people and especially women occupying those posts they, that will be uh, uh, done by corporate uh, in the higher hierarchy of the corporate if you see the mostly the middle uh, level management and lower middle level management uh, um, people they resort to this kind of a uh, an offense so hence since uh, women are involved this is uh, called as pink collar crime now what is green color is there any crime called as green collar crime uh very good very good this is i mean uh, any environmental crime you know harming the ecosystem and all um, adding pollution level illegally then uh, deforestation wildlife crimes and all i mean they are all pertaining to the green green is nothing but nature isn't it so environment so ecology yes yes very correct so they are called green collar crimes anyway we are also familiar is there any red collar that means there is red collar also no red collar is white collar crimes only ha ah, white collar crimes you know they 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 will be very sophisticated and all they don't use any violence but then here white collar can co can convert itself into red collar when when it is accompanied by violence assault homicide and all if that is also there then we call such type white collar crimes not rather as white collar but red collar crimes then is there any blue collar crimes so there are blue collar crimes also the working people the working class if they do i mean normal burglary theft and all these type of uh, crimes normally done by working class and all they are called blue collar unlike i'm um, now opposite to white collar mm, these people are you know blue collar then black collar crimes are there any black collar very dangerous category and especially this you know clergy people i mean a christian community should not again raise voices saying that you are calling clergy as a uh, uh, offender and all this is you know as per the definition it is given here so people who are in that position you know bishops father clergy so these are the people you know who try to abuse their position because they are in that fatherly figure position and all so whoever comes for prayers or whoever come for you know um, uh, for for church and all they try to take advantage and then to the extent of molesting minor girls sexual assault and people and all this is quite common we have seen in many movies also they are showing this and many real scenario also we see see that uh, mm, nuns and all they are being subject to this and even in uh, hinduism also you see many mm, fake babas and then fake uh, sanyasis uh, they they do this kind of baba swami ji we heard here uh, nityanand swami sometime back and he was also into uh, that kind of a mm, you know misusing his position and all so if such people commit crime this kind of crimes and uh, they are called black color so we have different colors black blue red green pink etc etc so white collar crimes is also one such crime where you know they they will never figure out they will never come to the surface like i mean uh, king pin they will also sit at one place and then the the person who does it is some somebody else and then the the king pin or who is the mastermind will be somewhere else now these relate to offenses of fraud forgery for definition of this we do have in ipc cheating misappropriation criminal breach of trust money laundering now money laundering we know what laundry does laundry does i mean it cleanses the dirty um, cloth and then makes it clean neat and all so initially the dirty money that is the ill gotten money in some process there is a, a, it will be integrated into the general circulation and then it becomes white so when you go for land purchase or some flat purchase they also how much are you going to give in black and how much in white so white has got a Mm, connotation that means you are trying to um, circulate your ill gotten money or illegal money or black money into uh, white money or the legal money so 
conspiracies are involved here abetments are there and then with increased corporate banking stock market trade and other commercial activities the type of magnitude of fraud has undergone a vast change so initially this was not that rampant and then as uh, you know these uh, uh, corporate uh, thing and then banking systems are growing more and stock market everybody is into that trade and all so as these activities commercial activities are becoming increasingly more so so also this kind of offenses are also increasing then the export import regulations customs excise income tax foreign exchange transactions so wherever money is involved to to a great magnitude and so also these offenses uh, naturally are associated now there are again several laws and then of course in different chapters under ipc and all these have been uh, discussed and apart from the we we have income tax act companies act customs act organized crime act so these are some of the uh, special acts that uh, speak about this kind of uh, economic offenses and what constitute what acts and then what punishment um, how it has to be done and all is already dealt in under different headings of ipc and then also this special laws so fraud involves fraud the definition is you know it involves invariably the element of deception is there and then it is um, i mean causing to believe somebody what is false or misleading as facts and leading into an error by intentional concealment this is very important when you talk of deception intentional concealment of facts or positive misrepresentation of the facts of course forgery and or you do get lot of definitions there now the thing which is paramount is ingredients need to be proved in any offense whether it be forgery or whether it be any uh, uh, deception because these are things which are related mostly to the documents now you have to prove in case of forgery and all uh, uh, a making of a false document or at least a part of it if there are bunch of documents in a particular um, you know uh, um, transaction now even if one document becomes uh, um, manipulated or fraudulent and then fake the entire thing becomes doubtful suspected now such making should be with an intention so whatever false document you are making there should be some intention without intention there is nothing no you cannot make out a crime so these ingredients of forgery you need to establish it is the investigating officer who has to take lot of pain to because in order to um, book the case under forgery all the ingredients that go to prove that particular offense need to be uh, collected and they, they need to be processed and they need to be put forth for the uh, purpose of uh, argument and trial now of course corporate frauds also we hear lot of things this in recent times and then um frauds by business people against each other and uh, investors consumers tax authorities um companies so there are different modus operandi that are uh, involved and then embezzlement by um uh, mismanagement of money funds and all is there by the employees and all so these are uh, common things that happen now offshore banking and invest yes kya hai Ah, inside trading, of course, uh, that is also very, very important. I mean that, that nobody will know, and then this silently, these things will happen. You know. Now, these are these are um, documents, as I said. You know, whether in the shipping of goods or ben, uh, benefits yeah. by of it. Yes. Uh, why do you mean that inside trading? information secret information see there is some information by any uh, office which has to be kept a secret isn't it and that should be within the office only if such an information which is very vital if that if the same insider is there he is trying to make use of that he will be benefited isn't it he will be benefited and only insider will come to know about it you know he is supposed to maintain the secrecy of that but then he mm, he takes benefit of that then we say insider trade yes sir thank you uh the use of forged documents in land grabbing because these uh, 
immobile properties and all only documents uh, become uh, very vital evidence isn't it so bogus mark sheets i mean these days to get a certificate to get a mark sheet and all so easy you pay some amount so good printers are there good uh, scanners are there all that one has to do is good quality paper get it and then forge the document and get some calligrapher and then uh, with the good handwriting you forge the document and then you get it so easy so in such type of uh, scams and uh, um, organized crimes or economic uh, offenses and all uh, it is the document that becomes important whether it be degree certificate some travel document so whatever be the uh, financial offense you need to produce lot of documents in proof of that of course forged currency this is very very important counterfeit and all i mean coimbatore currency then pakistan currency and all i mean they are very quite common and then there is a lot of procedure involved and then how to impound that particular when you come to know that a particular note is fake and all how to impound and rbi has got a very elaborate uh, kind of a procedure for that in case you know if a fake note is found then what procedure has to be adopted and ultimately what happens what will be the fate of that fake note and all in that place they are going to destroy it or then they are going to reprint it again and all so there is a procedure involved now normally the practice uh, i am not promoting a, a kind of a um, uh, wrong this thing message here but then only thing is uh, what normally happens in any bank is you know at the end of the day the cashier himself you know he, he will be in a hurry he will not notice him um, somebody is giving a fake note uh, along with other genuine notes also he will not have time at his disposal so he coolly takes that money he counts uh, mechanically with that counting machine and all if uh, the number of denomination is okay like then he'll say that um, he'll he's going to keep that cash in the chest box you know now only at the end of the day he'll have some leisure and then he try to verify and to his surprise there is a fake note there so if it is small dimension he will not take bother to inform it to the police or inform it to the bank and also silently what he does is that is the practice what is the practice i am telling so he tries to replace that fake note with his own 100 and all it doesn't matter so why will i take the trouble of again going to the police bar bar so ये ठीक है हम हंड्रेड रुपीज हमारा जेनियन से रिप्लेस करेंगे साइलेंट विल आई रिमेन साइलेंट सो दिसो डूइंग दैट बिकॉज दे डोंट चेक इट यू नो वेल पुटिंग दी रिप्लेसिंग द मनी इन दी ए टी एम सेंडल दे हार्डली बॉदर यू नो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स इट इज द फेक नोट दैट Hmm. But then, uh, my, uh, my experience uh, when I was there as director of FSL is something different, you know. Even RBI people who have passed their note as a genuine note, uh, when uh, out of some doubt and all, out of to be more, uh, uh, you know, uh, to be on the safe side, they also try to send such notes where they have some doubt and all. They have sent some notes to us also. but very surprisingly when we checked with uh, our instruments and all they are little sophisticated and all we found them to be uh, fake counterfeit currency that so is, uh, that's hmm. why demonetization hmm of course of there course were, there were there were transfer series hmm there were two to note of similar series signed by two different governments correct correct and that happened See, this is all procedure which I don't want to dwell into because we are not here, a police department, to know about these things. So I'll skip this. See, straight away we'll go for the what is that? So what is white called? So there is a different process involved in you know converting the white into um, and the black into white money. So placement, layering, integration. These are the three important steps. You know, placement we mean physical disposal of cash proceeds for. for its placement into financial services institutions layering adding a complex layer of transaction to that 
finally it is the last step integration so these three methods are there to convert the you know the black money into white and there are so many people now preliminary inquiry is you know uh, after lalita kumari uh, case so they said uh, at least in financial crimes economic crimes and then uh, matters relating to marriage and all they said a preliminary inquiry is a must even before uh, the um, uh, lodging cognizable whether it is a, if the ingredients make out a cognizable case or not is there a prima facie case and all so if there is a little doubt that whether a case can be made out and all so a preliminary inquiry is a must there so they they will process the information so even newspapers media and all they are giving lot of information whether it is information is true correct or otherwise also there has to be some kind of a preliminary inquiry so some 14 days 15 days uh, i think initially now in the new act also they have uh, Uh, did they reduce or enhance the days? Is it twenty days or fifteen days? Twenty days, I think. So somebody who has a legal background should correct me if I am wrong. I think they they have reduced and enhanced maybe as per new act. So earlier it used to be some fifteen days or so for preliminary inquiry. Huh. so this is uh, uh, this is a must so they need to make a preliminary inquiry there and then of course register the fir then conduct the um, investigation and then a lot of relevant files are there documents are there they have to meticulously and of course in some cases you have this information stored in computers so those things need to be seized and unlike other uh, documents and other physical evidences computer is a different uh, um, subject altogether so somebody who is uh, investigating should also have uh, some skill in uh, collecting the electronic data or electronic records that 65b wala all that they have to know and forwarding the documents to the concerned experts because after all in order to know whether these uh, in case of currency whether it is genuine or fake or in case of firearm whether it is country made company made or in case of some document relating to land grabbing and all you have to definitely send it to the because every purchase there is a sale document there is a lease document there is a sale deed and all such documents you know uh, to know whether they are bogus documents or otherwise genuine documents you need to send it to the concerned expert and of course you need to examine this uh, witnesses and lot of uh, intelligent way of uh, questionnaire need to be prepared and they need to be asked about this and then elicit all the kind of relevant information from them then of course accused also has got his own privileges and all he may remain silent if he doesn't want to tell so without uh, compromising the rights of the accused also you should examine him and in case if you find that he is a very crucial witness or he is going to be very very vital then you can also get his uh, statement recorded uh, in the presence of magistrate under 164 or whatever as per old acts and all then of course drug trafficking i need not tell you here also there is a hierarchy of uh, people who operate kingpin is there peddlers are there hackers are there so many layers of people are there and then there are in spite of un convention single convention double convention you know the menace is still going on earlier um, india used to be only a transit country now it has also become a hub now you name any drug street drug the the drug is available to you now for you know there are stringent acts again under uh, ndps where you know small quantity commercial quantity and then uh, the um, other provisions presumption uh, of uh, men seri and all all are there and death penalty is also uh, is there but in spite of all that this trafficking still remained a unresolved kind of a unodc and all uh, sitting in delhi and all they do operate but then uh, this as long as there is a imbalance between you know the the uh, i mean the manufacturer and the abuser if they if they as long as abusers are there the manufacturing will be there so and every day the market is being flooded with the design and drugs and all and whatever drug that is not figuring in the list schedule so they will modify the original parent drug and then they will make a very much more potent drug and then they are marketing that in the um, 
uh, and to be consumed by the abusers. So these are all, uh, of course, environmental crimes as we have seen, green collar crimes and all. And whenever we call, we, we, we talk of environmental crime, one famous um, lawyer who is expert in pill public interest litigation is M.C. Mehta, great man of course. So we need to talk about and this we have to consider as a you know, magna carta as far as human environment is concerned. Stockholm declaration is very very important declaration. So it has given us some 26 guidelines principles and then uh, the, there are um, out of that three main categories we can say is you know global environmental assessment program then environmental management activity and international initiatives to assist national and international assessment of management and all. So quickly I will go through some case studies which are little interesting. So Bhopal gas tragedy we all know the only um, gas that we need to remember which is a very deadly gas is methyl isocyanate gas MIC in short that was the thing and uh, if you see the, uh, the the concentration you know very very small but then uh, since it uh, uh, interferes with the oxygen consumption so it is a competitor for oxygen so in place of oxygen it goes and binds to the um, it will not allow um, oxygen to bind with but instead uh, this gas goes and binds with the um, iron portion of hemoglobin and then you have all uh, breath problems, uh, respiratory problems. So this was one tragedy. So there also from there the concept you know let polluter pay whatever um, damage that occurs to the public it is the polluter if suppose he is the one perpetrator is the perpetrator is the polluter so polluter only has to pay so polluter pays is the concept there then so many people and so many affected so many deaths have happened and this is all because of chronic inflammatory damage to the eyes and lungs not only to the respiratory parts and then some people went blind so this is because of the chronic inflammation, inflammation that happens to the eyes and all. So somebody will become blind also because the, the concentration, the, the gas that emerges is very toxic because when it meddles with the breathing and all, it is very, very dangerous. And people who survived also have suffered psychological issues. Then we'll move on to this. He is the man who is, you know, M.C. Mehta versus another Union of India. So, lot of cases by this advocate, you know, whenever a, an issue on pollution comes, so lot of, uh, he, he figures out there and then, um, then, um, this is uh, one case, OLM case, this is called and uh, we'll move on to another Velour Citizens Welfare Forum versus Union of India. So, citizens complained that untreated effluents from a tanneries and other industries in Tamil Nadu were discharged into the river. This is one of the commonest thing that any industry will do silently when is there, there is a water body, when there is a river, very silently without treatment and all, they discharge water effluents that come out of the um, factory. So, they will be silently released into the river. So, river, some people may be some people may be interested in uh, um, drinking, I mean that is the only probably the drinking water source. So invariably they will drink from that river and then those who drink from water from that river will naturally be affected and all. So they, it contains a lot of toxic gases, toxic acids and all you know. So that is the reason why every effluent uh, it should not be released into the river but it should be treated properly then only it should be uh, released into the waters. So the river water flowed into the adjacent lands also due to rain and flooding in the nearby town. The nearby lands were mostly used for cultivation and agriculture. As a result of the effluence, the agricultural land became contaminated. The Supreme Court in this case, it said, it held that industrialists ought to take the necessary steps for the restoration of the environment. Because they cannot, just because they are uh, factory owners and all, that doesn't mean that indiscriminately they need to um, allow the effluents to flow into the river, which is a 
the only probably the only uh, drinking water uh, facility over there so before the effluent uh, effluent is being released into waters one mandatory thing is that they need to treat it properly make it harmless only then release it into the uh, waters so of course uh, kamal nath case another one you know Mm, in this case, one who pollutes the environment must pay polluter pays. This is the concept that has emerged out of this particular case. Then, this administration changed the course of river to protect the Montel from uh, future floods. The court ruled that the Montel should pay for the restitution of the area's environment. So, here also the concept of polluter pays, and then the pollution caused by uh, the Montel uh, models. Uh, various constru constructions ah. in the river bed ah. and on the banks of the river bias must be removed and reversed. So court always, I mean if it is a public at large if they are involved and it is the public health which is getting affected definitely the court always will favor the public and then it says that where is the polluter as a fine let that polluter pays. Of course Jagannath versus Union of India is yet another very important case and uh, shrimp farming it is called and then the issue orders against the shrimping farming culture industry found guilty of polluting the coastal areas. So court uh, ruled that the shrimp culture industry was uh, obligated to compensate because they are the ones who are polluting so definitely whatever uh, um, harm or whatever difficulty that the public is facing so the, the polluter need to compensate for that. So this was another case where the, the court ruled that authority should determine the amount of compensation to be recovered from polluters as the cost of repairing the environment. So environment somebody has to restore. If the polluter is the one who is responsible for creating the pollution natural that he has to pay the compensation. So I think with this we have completed the unit and uh, probably after the um, exam and after the uh, practical demo and all uh, we'll again meet and then uh, we'll start afresh with uh, unit 3. So that's all for today from my side. I think we'll leave the meeting for today.